ladies and gentlemen, amidst your virtual applause, let's welcome Dr. Anurag Batra, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief, BW Business yes. World and Exchange for Media Group. And on this panel, where we'll talk about the role of the CEO in building brands, we have with us Mr. Rajesh Ramakrishnan, Managing Director of Profeti Van Mill India Private Limited, Mr. Sarveer Singh, CEO of PolicyBazaar.com, and Mr. Kushal Agarwal, co-founder Zozo Day. A very warm welcome to all of you and over to you, Dr. Batra. Thank you so much, Kathy. Good to see you, Rajesh, virtually. Have you haven't met in a while, but it's good to meet virtually. I'm sure we'll, now things are getting better. We'll meet uh, Kushal. Uh, welcome to this conversation. And my old friend, Sarveer, again, good to see you. Virtually, we are meeting each other virtually. First of all, Rajesh, are, are people chewing on gum more than they were or they're chewing less? Uh, I think they're chewing pretty much what they were doing before, but they seem to be eating more lollipops and candies for sure. <laughs> Good. Uh, you know, I think uh, sweets and, you know, candy has its own place. And once in a while, all the child in us comes out. In, Absolutely. Course, Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so now, uh, you know, again, um, this panel is a panel of leaders, uh, whether they're called CEOs or founders. Uh, let me start by asking, each one of you, let me start with Rajesh, go to Sarveer and then come to Kushal, is, um, you know, though your businesses and your brands are, uh, that bring in money uh, are different than uh, who you are, because in certain service businesses, let's take a news business uh, without taking the name of a founder of a news channel, you know, if that news channel's founder is embroiled then a controversy, it will naturally, and Sarveer in his last life, used to work for a leading media group and was the head of investments. So clearly uh, the personality and the business are intertwined. The brand and the business are intertwined. Whereas uh, Rajesh in a business where you have so many brands, but how does uh, the CEO's leadership build a brand? Uh, and these days brand, we're talking of three dimensions. Uh, we're talking of employee branding. We're talking of customers centric brand, uh, uh, you know, interactions. And third, if you are a listed entity, we're also talking of a stake, stakeholders who are investors, uh, you know, uh, the brand amongst them. So give us a sense of how can a leader help in building uh, the brand from these three dimensions, internally, yeah. uh, customers, and if it's a listed entity, stakeholders. Even if it's not a listed entity, you have your third party partners, distributors, vendors, so on and so forth. Sure. And uh, thanks, thanks, Anurag. And uh, as always, a pleasure to be here on this uh, panel. Um, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, today the CEO wears multiple hats, right? And if I were to look at it from a brand building perspective, I would call out uh, two or three different hats. So the one first I would say is a CEO is also a chief growth officer, right? In the sense of being able to identify looking around what's happening in the environment, etc. What are some of the trends that are happening around us? And therefore, how can the company leverage those trends to form the building box for future growth? Because without growth, the company does not exist, right? So one of the most important things the CEO does is wear the hat of a chief growth officer or a chief strategy officer, which in a way shapes the vision and the strategy for the organization, right? So that's one. Uh, at another level, if you look at it, uh, the CEO is also the chief sustainability officer, right? Because today what's happening is there is a lot more focus on uh, brand purpose. What does the brand stand for? What would the organization like to stand for? How does the organization view environment? How does the organization view uh, communities? So, in you know, a little bit of, in terms of shaping the thought around how do you build a sustainability focused organization, which while doing uh, business, is also doing good for others. So whether it is to do with reducing plastic, to do with reducing carbon footprint or water consumption or any of those. So I think the other role that the CEO plays is the chief sustainability officer. And the third role uh, I could say is to also act as a chief enabling officer. You know, again, to the point that you made, a CEO has to manage external stakeholders and internal stakeholders. So once the strategy is clear, how does the CEO remove bottlenecks? How does the CEO galvanize the team to work towards certain agreed priorities? So in that sense, the CEO is literally the chief enabling officer also, right? And last but not the least, 
I would also say the CEO is also CCO, Chief Culture Officer, in terms of what kind of a culture do you want to build, which facilitates all the three things that I spoke about. So in a way, if you really look at it, I think the CEO wears multiple hats in today's context. The key thing is to have a consistent vision for the brands and for the company and to build that in a consistent manner, in a sustained manner over a period of time. Okay. So we, uh, you heard, uh, you heard uh, Rajesh talk about each of the stakeholders and he gave nice uh, acronyms, you know. Uh, and I would add, uh, you know, in the last 10 months, you had to be the chief energy officer, which means you gave energy to everybody else. You had yeah. to be the chief empathetic officer. You know, you gave empathy. I'd like to understand what is your take? Uh, you work with promoters. You're working with two founders right now. You lead a business. So how how does the founder, CEO, you know, impact the business? So uh, first, of course, good to see you again, Anurag and, and Rajesh uh, and hi, 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 Kushal. Uh, I think the, uh, you know, the question and I'll, I'll try to stay clear of the controversial side of the question that perhaps you were asking. Uh, but I think the, I also feel that one of the roles, you know, whether uh, you're founder CEO or you are, you know, uh, CEO after the founder or, you know, with the founder, I mean, they, they, there are many configurations that are possible. Uh, I think one of the roles also that is very important is to, in at least what I have uh, learned and discovered, is to be the chief, you know, repeatability officer. In the sense that, what I mean by that is that, uh, you know, Rajesh made a lot of... Uh, I would call it focus. You know, <laughs> reiterating your focus, reiterating your focus. Yeah, so so I think what, what really happens is that, A, obviously, Rajesh, I think, put it in, in, very, in a very good framework that first you, you have to be very clear on what, what you want to do, right? What are the areas of focus? Because, see, a, a company can only do a few things, right? I, I believe that nobody can do more than two, three things. Uh, and so those two, three things have to be cascaded down, right? Uh, at, at the right time in terms of priorities and things like that. So I think it's one is clear on what those two, three things are. Uh, then, you know, who are those people who should be doing those two, three things, uh, whether you have the right, you know, people in place. And then, of course, you know, uh, a key part I feel is that, um, uh, especially, you know, in organizations like ours, where, you know, we are, we are only, you know, 12 years old. So relative to Perfetti and, and I, I'm sorry, Kushal, I don't know how long you have been around, but, you know, they're at a different point in our, in our journey, right, as, as a company. So I think it is also important to look out, right, in terms of saying, okay, yes, we will do some, uh, some things this month and this week. And, you know, a lot of team members are obviously energized by that. But what are we going to do next year, right? Where, where is this uh, industry going? What is our place in the industry? See, because we are not yet reached a point where we can be 100% even sure what is our place in the industry. So today, just taking our example, we are a distributor of insurance product. But honestly, we are much more than a distributor. And obviously, we aspire to be in a different position. So you're also changing your you know, uh, area. And that requires, like I said, clarity on priorities and make sure that you're putting the people in place so that you can actually do those things. Because the problem is that for the first, let's say even for a year, nothing may show up right, in terms of results. So I think you you have to you know back those people. You have to have the confidence you know in, in what you're saying and what you're doing, and and of course you know you have to course correct. So so I think the 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 key thing is to and and I'm sure it's different in different organizations at different times. But the main thing is to be you know I, I feel just to be very clear on in what are you trying to drive, uh, whether you have the right people with you, and you know how to make sure that they are in the right position, and then to look out a little bit. I think that that's a very critical thing uh, because uh, you know as I feel like in the second decade of, of our life, we are still very young. And I think, you know, making sure that the right habits are put in place, the right uh, cultures. And as you know, you know, culture is a much abused word, right? Uh, uh, and again, for organizations which have been around for a long time, it's, it's a little different because they have already, you know, hopefully imbibed certain cultures and, you know, they're already there. Uh, but, you know, in uh, organizations like ours, it's very important to walk the talk, right? And to make sure that you know, we, because you're faced with trade-offs on a daily basis, right? The, the high performing, you know, uh, star employee who misbehaves, right? Now you, you know, it's very tempting to say that we should stay with it because you know that he or she is going to produce next week and next month. But you also know that if you allow that to happen, then you cannot, or at least then you can't ask for a culture where you say that, you know, everybody should be very uh, logical and we will not tolerate jerks or whatever it is. So I, I always find it very humorous because I hear all these stories where people say we will not tolerate jerks and all that. And then, you know, you find that there are a lot of those around. So I think that, so we are in that stage where it's really important to walk the talk. See, 
as opposed to when you're very young as an organization where there i feel survival is the main thing right you can't afford to have all these morals and all you just want to survive but i think now we are at a point where where all of these things are important also the culture matters you know rajesh talked about the culture you talked about what you tolerate you talked to prioritization recreation of what the focus is you talk about what is the you know new things uh, that may be exciting to the core team they need to be brought into discussion and the buy in so you know i agree with you there is a price of tolerating uh, you know behavior which is not exactly aligned to your culture uh, in the short term by tolerating it you may achieve some objective but in the long term it doesn't work so if you have toxic colleagues if you have toxic behavior from some people i have learned that you know you got to cut it then because otherwise you know it it is like a rot that kind of gets in completely uh, you know kushal you are the youngest on the panel you went to a business school from 2011 to 13 so you worked for the last 7 years you are a travel enthusiast right yeah uh, and then you co-founded exo exo day you know now tell us uh, in a young organization like yours uh, you have the opportunity to shape culture Uh, the culture also then shapes up your brand so give us your perspective as the founder of a business yeah so um thanks anurag uh, for uh, for bringing me uh, in this panel and uh, sharing my thoughts uh, so just just to share about zozo day uh, we are a software company uh, uh, software product company basically we help companies to digitize their uh, sales incentive programs for their sales team or their channel partners uh, we are a typical saas uh, software company um all together and uh, we have a history of 8 uh, years uh, younger than policy bazaar for sure uh, so uh, thanks rajesh and thanks uh, sarveer for sharing your insight so if you uh, if if i see zozo day uh, uh, i saw that we started this company uh, in a typical garage way where we took a took a room from one of our friends and then we started over there we just had one table and there were you know uh, a bunch of enthusiasts working in that uh, uh, in that table uh and everyone were doing everything so there was no defined roles at that point uh so that was an actual start then we saw that uh, there was a phase where where uh, uh you know we started uh, bringing in new people and these people are uh, started asking for jds so we we never knew that what what exactly are jds uh, that is job description uh so we started learning about the job description people are started asking for designation i mean i didn't have the same problem anybody asked me what jd was i give them jack daniels but that's another uh, story <laughs> yeah so uh, so that was the second phase where we started understanding uh, the the market needs and people started asking for uh, for these resignations etc then there was a third phase when we started hiring people from uh, from better uh, colleges from better uh, companies and better background where people uh, started talking about processes that okay this is the process we should which you should follow and uh, uh, and you know they they started talking more and more about improvising things then there was a fourth phase where we saw that there was a lot of negativity in the company uh and uh, this typically happens in all the startups where when you uh, hire people from multiple backgrounds from multiple uh, places uh, and you don't have an experience of managing them uh, they start complaining about certain things they start complaining about uh, about the process or, or certain systems etc and that is where uh, you know we went through uh, last last year last year i would say and uh, here what we did was uh, we made uh, these uh, i would say backbenchers as uh, class captains and uh, we made them as culture guardians and uh, we asked them to create a panel and uh, start working on on the issues which the employee has and have and then they uh, they started working on it and that that pretty worked well uh, for us all together and now we are kind of you know uh, moving towards uh, Uh, becoming uh, a highly tech and highly efficient uh, you know organization will be touching uh, close to 300 cr this year and uh, yes all all our team members are geared up all together so there's a i would say that there's a it's it's a journey and uh, us uh, founders and uh, i would say with uh, less experience uh, we have to uh, uh, rightly uh, sarab bhi mentioned we have to uh, walk the talk and uh, and yes we have to we have to innovate ourselves at all times and we have to be progressive in our thoughts 
um like if you see uh, uh, uh sorry uh, covid has bought uh, a lot of unpredictability in the business uh, i mean uh, at this point of time i can't forecast it uh, very clearly that okay what will be my uh, you know uh, next quarter's revenue or next uh, year's revenue in a in a uh, 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 with great perfection uh, 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 but now uh, with that thought we also have the other side of the story that okay there are companies who are have who have started accepting the digital transformation they they start they have started becoming more progressive they they like integrations they want to start immediately etc so yeah so uh, i i i i feel that uh, it's it's a journey and uh, we have to learn from the journey and uh, uh, and take uh, 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 learn from the situations which we which we have and then you know uh, move ahead with you know the beauty about this panel is very diverse it pretty much represents uh, what we have out there which is an established company which is an mnc like perfect ivan mele before rajesh came into it he worked with when um, fmcg brands uh, in senior leadership capable uh, capacity before he came as the md and ceo at perfect when mele <coughs> excuse me and i'm you know i must say that he's lucky to have an indian as the ceo your global ceo is also an indian right rajesh that's so right that, that helps uh, and then you have savveer who's working in a um, home grown uh, you know um, you know proficon i don't call it a unicorn now it's hopefully at some stage going to be a profitable unicorn and again there are challenges in the uh, uh, you know capital raising ecosystem there are challenges in the business environment but throughout those challenges how to build how to scale up as we said how to be focused on what is uh, needed is the key and you kushal brought in as a young startup founder who's built a sizable company uh, which has an impact on the business world so to say you brought in uh, you hit the nail on it said by saying that when you're a young company as you all there are different cultures that kind of come together and that shape your company's brand uh, and the ceo's style of functioning does shape it you know so and you you really talked about the fact that at when it's growing very fast and there are different people coming from different background different cultures sometimes there can be conflicts and there can be gray areas that may lead to dissonance but uh, the beauty of uh, startups is also is that uh, there is a sense of ownership that exists in startups that possibly doesn't exist in bigger companies possibly but now let me go on to uh, uh, the second like let me ask you uh, rajesh let me start with you again which are some of the companies give us an example where the culture was shaped by the ceo and it was a positive example and give us an example of a company where the culture was shaped by the ceo but it didn't work out as well uh, eventually or you know as as uh, you know in some way the ceo and the company being intertwined if it's a service business there can be collateral damage so give us some examples that readily come to your mind yeah i i, I think you know anurag to that point uh, i'm not sure whether you know from a culture point of view whether there is a very strong good or bad right it's all at end of the day contextual and it needs to be viewed in the context of the industry what stage the industry is in what kind of an ambition that the company has and so on and so forth so i you know first of all i wouldn't like to pass any judgment saying you know whether it is good or bad uh, in terms of culture i think that's the first point second is yes while the ceo can you know help drive it from the top and a lot of things get driven from the top unless it very clearly trickles down and cascades down in the organization it can't become part of the culture because there is only so much that one person can do and there needs to be a strong ownership of that culture amongst you know definitely the management team and the people below so that everybody is able to consistently demonstrate that culture in all walks of life so that then that becomes part of the organization's dna right so i think a few few of those points to keep in mind and i mean if i look around and uh, see at a few companies i mean you can talk about elon musk and tesla right as an example or you look at um, say someone like steve jobs so you know what happens is there is a personality of the you know ceo which very often plays a pretty determining role in the way the culture starts to shape up i mean you know if there is a ceo who is so focused on work is very very you know uh, uh, ruthless and passionate about driving things 
then that sort of uh, starts trickling down in the organization and taking shape uh, in terms of how the culture needs to be uh, you know uh, fixed but for example i was reading a book recently where they talk about the aluminium company of america right and the ceo when they were going through a tough time and there was a new ceo who was appointed and the only thing he talked about for the first 6 months was how safety was important for the company and people actually got scared because they thought they had put somebody completely incompetent in charge of the company and they started selling the shares of the company in 6 months the company became the fastest growing and the most profitable company in the us and it stayed like that for a long time because they realized that because there was a paramount focus on safety it resulted in productivity improvement it resulted in many other cascading effects on the entire uh, supply chain that that started resulting in some fantastic results for the company so i think the point is yes the personality of the ceo can drive the business or the culture to a certain extent but it needs to come together as a collective for it to really have some impact uh, on the full culture of the organization over a period of time if you talk to any ceo or a founder elon musk names come but elon musk is also seen as a maverick uh, who exactly. may do things more in a you know spontaneous way i'm being nice yeah. exactly yeah, but, but, yeah 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 you know in a, i use the word spontaneous you can use a term you like to use yeah. but uh, but you gave a great example and now let me go to kushal and ask him kushal give us a sense of companies or founders or leaders you look up to for the kind of impact they've had on their companies and their colleagues yeah so uh so there are a couple of them uh, whom i i closely follow and uh, i admire uh, one is mr sridhar vembu uh, uh, who recently received the padma shri award uh, uh, who is a founder of zoho corp uh, uh, a, a very brilliant guy uh, i i had a chance to meet him as well uh, once or twice and uh, uh, so uh, so uh, so he 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 uh, he rightly talks about uh, what rajesh uh uh earlier uh, talked about you know uh, culture growth enabling and uh, sustainability and uh, you know uh, keeping that in mind uh, uh, you know he has trained uh, india to how to sell saas products uh, previously if you see uh, in india uh, only companies like uh, infosys or uh, wipro or uh, you know accenture or other companies who are in services segment uh, had flourished but he has shown a direction he has shown a path that uh, uh, an indian grown uh, uh, you know a software product can also sell globally uh, and also locally uh, and uh, uh, and and he has uh, he has he has kind of built uh, the entire organization in such a sustainable way um, that he has he himself has uh, established a zoho university where you know he train uh the uh, the people uh, uh towards uh, what the saas products are and how uh, how people can actually sell uh, saas products and also understand uh, explaining about uh, a, a more integrities about about the overall process so uh, uh, so yes yeah, so mr shridhar vembo is uh, one person whom i uh, you know look up to a uh, second person uh, i i feel is a great leader uh, whom i follow is uh, mr jeff jeff bisos uh i mean uh, i mean I, i haven't met him or i haven't interacted any any time but uh, you know i've interacted with the employees of amazon um, and uh, you know there's a there's a there's a completely different type of cheer in the in the uh, in, in 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 their uh, kind of uh, in their face uh, recently i i met one of the representative uh, one of the uh, uh, person who was uh, uh one of the employee of amazon uh, who manages uh, uh, you know amazon's uh, seller uh, services and uh, they were working on integration of uh, amazon and uh, shopper stop uh, i mean they were uh, they had to sell uh, goods from shopper stop to uh, via amazon and he was so excited and uh, i've seen for the first time that uh, an employee is sp- speaking so positive about his target so positive about his uh, his vision who so positive about you know uh, challenges which uh, amazon has put forward in front of him so he was just asked to kind of uh, get uh, some x number and uh, he has been given all freedom to kind of do it so uh, i think i think uh, i think uh, 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 building that culture where 
uh, where your people uh, become uh, a part of your mission uh, is something which is very very important for uh, for an organization and for a ceo and uh, you know i i keep taking notes from uh, 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 from 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 that uh, from uh, from the friend of mine uh, and i i i i i, I try to implement uh, the same kind of notes uh, some 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 different kind of you know things in my organization so yeah so i i think i think building a culture uh, you know uh, uh, as rightly mentioned by rajesh uh, has to come from top to bottom and uh, uh you know if you are able to make your team a part of your mission uh, and your uh, if you if, if your team believes that they are building something amazing uh you know uh, you have you have won the race so yeah so that's that that's that's input from my side can say kushal is that my i follow jeff bezos at least in my hair style uh you know i'm trying to look like him uh, so clearly no on a on a serious note yesterday jeff bezos resigned as the ceo he staked on the company to a scale where i mean he believes that while he continue to give the vision he there are other capable leaders uh, in the leadership team who can take forward so you know again he's both the people you talked about uh, have had the impact beyond their own companies they've inspired us uh, and you know uh, again they've been visionaries in their own way sarveer now uh, your point of view you know i think both uh, rajesh and kushal have obviously covered uh, you know uh, names that are you know unquestionably great so i, I don't think there's uh, much to add in that dimension I, i would just like to the way i like to think about this whole thing if you take away the personalities is that you know of our in our generation and where we are currently you know customer centricity has become the key issue uh, and i believe that you know there was there was a period of time and in fmcg is a, of course great example of that you know where there was this whole thing that you had where you had this mass advertising uh you know mass distribution and basically what you did was that you got people to you know know about the product and then you know they went and selected it on the shelf or whatever the you know story was but i think the paradigm has changed uh, i think now given social media given the fact that everything can be can move very quickly you know from one person to another the whole thing is now driven by people and people's experiences with a brand service so whether it's apple amazon at some level if you realize that they are uh, you know these all these companies uh, i would say are extremely customer centric and and what happens then is that once you decide to move from that perspective uh, then you know everything that you do is driven by that and your consumers your the people who use your products and services are your ambassadors they are the ones who actually do the marketing for you they are the ones you know who create you know uh, your company and who decide the success i mean you know for instance like whatsapp is a is an amazing service right i mean sometimes i think we forget what a amazing achievement it is right you know uh, you know whatever 55 people created a service which uh, practically half the world you know runs on today and and then you know it was zero marketing zero traditional you know no television nothing like that so so i think the the point uh, that that and i think we are moving in an era where this is going to become bigger and bigger part uh, and i think the main thing now is to kind of learn from you know these people who have been able to master these points about customer centricity and it's a easy thing to again talk about but it's really hard to execute really hard to make those investments you know before uh they start to pay off and really invest in in all of that because it is a comforting thing to do right even at policy bazaar for us it's a comforting thing to spend x crores on television and y crores on google because you know as they say nobody's going to fire you for doing that because that's what is expected and of course that works too so you know it's not to sort of knock that but i think as we go forward we also have to remember that the future is not on this side the future is on creating you know customer experiences and you know you know even in a in a field like insurance which you know is very hard to kind of create too much customer joy out of but you have to create customer joy so that people will talk to each other people will tell each other so so for me i think the uh, and i think having grown up in, in at a time when you know manufacturing fmcg etc were the heroes right we we looked up to these companies and said like this is what a well run company is like i think now we are slowly transitioning you know to people like apple or uh, amazon or google or facebook or whichever you know ones that we want to pick and i think one of the key differentiators between that set and this set uh, to a large extent is their focus on customer centricity and being able to you know uh, to tap into the power of customer networks and the fact that people you know talk to each other or message each other or whatever whichever form you want to pick so i think that is the defining in, in to me is the defining lesson at this point and that's what uh, you know i am trying to emulate trying to learn from various people as 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 to how they do this and what can we bring to the table and you know adapt it to our insurance context and make sure 
you know that people are are happy about it it's it's also uh, you know it also teaches you one more thing is to how to look at adjacencies right what was traditionally you know to say that okay we are in the business of insurance but you know are we in that business are we in the business of making people feel secure are we in the business of making feel comforted so then should we do other things that will make them feel secure and comforted now you know there are challenges in that there is regulation there's i mean there are many sort of reasons not to do them right to be honest but i think we have to think very broadly we have to think uh, you know uh, we are also lucky i would say especially we are living in a time where capital is abundant right i mean there is so much capital that is available uh, you know companies like ours are very lucky we you know we it's it's a question of our ability to imagine our ability to dream uh, versus our ability to you know for sca scarcity of capital being a challenge and and as you know anurag this was not true even 10 years ago in india right uh, so so things have changed dramatically i mean god knows whether they will stay this way or not but today we are in that period so i think the opportunity is is to focus on this you know consumer uh, you know joy delight uh, and drive that such that you know you can create these networks which which work in your favor uh, so yeah so i think that's kind of how i look at uh, this question that you asked survive in your responsibility now you lead a business but you nurtured other other entrepreneurs other businesses so clearly your experience is both in terms of leading a company and helping other uh, leaders uh, build their companies has come into play i want to ask you rajesh if you had to say you know some rules of leadership were true before covid post covid some more nuances or contextual rules have been added uh, tell me post covid what are the rules for leadership especially in the context of brand building um yeah um yeah and uh, that's absolutely valid because there are some indeed some things that have stayed uh, true whether covid or otherwise i think uh, in terms of leadership you know being empathetic uh, you know sarabir also talked about it uh, being um, inspirational for the organization um, uh, you know also being a force of energy i think those things have remained constant and if not you know further got accentuated uh, as a result of uh, the pandemic but i think a few things that come in um, post uh, covid i would say one is um, you know uh, you know we earlier used to talk about situational adaptability i would you know go one step further to say today one of the key facets of leadership is situational agility right it is being very mindful of what is going around and being at a very fast pace to quickly adapt to it so i would uh, you know introduce the concept of situational agility that's becoming very very important right the other piece i would say which is important for ceos is our ability to unlearn and relearn you know the world is changing and let's face it i mean we are all you know i think except for uh, kushal uh, i think all of us have been around for a long time now and you know in a way we are living fossils but i would like to see myself as saying that am i able to constantly unlearn what i have learned and relearn for the new reality so i think that's another very important uh, facet uh, uh, for for leaders as well so i think these are two areas where um, you know i would say uh, we we need to really uh, uh, as leaders uh, see how we could uh, you know take some of this forward and last but not the least is a part of uh, both of these would be our ability and appetite to leverage technology to act as an enabler in doing many of the things that we never thought was possible to do with technology i mean launch conferences award functions i mean who would have thought all of this would have been possible right so i think our ability to just absorb leverage technology to uh, sort of act as enablers for the growth trajectory for the organization so yeah these would be a few things from my perspective kushal your pick on what are the rules to build you know you know for many years kushal has been my favorite team at conferences especially if i have gone to a entrepreneurship conference that why have we not produced a single product company out of india you know you know product company in the way i define a product but finally it looks like we started to produce product companies look at your company you talked about shridhar vimbu's company and i can talk about other 10 12 companies that i'm very uh, closely keeping a watch on but finally it looks like we started to build uh, companies uh, which are product companies we started to take risks which are bigger than just being a service business we started to use innovation to in some way make an impact beyond cost arbitrage right so give us a sense of what are the rules for building this new age company um, in a ultra competitive advantage uh, 
competitive uh, environment. And Rajesh rightly said, situational agility. He talked of the CEO being mindful. Uh, if you're mindful and you are watching both the macro and micro trends, you can be situationally agile. Because really, uh, the last 10, 11 months got us to take decisions faster, quicker, with less visibility of the future. We didn't have visibility sometimes beyond a week, two weeks, both on the supply side and the demand side. So give us a sense that now that you're building a company which is already sizable, you kind of got here. And let me ask this in a classic way. Uh, they say what got you here won't get you there. So tell us what got you here will still work and what are the new things you need to add? Uh, so Anurag, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk from the perspective of Zozode or uh, a software company basically or a, or a software startup, I would say. Um, uh, you know, uh, meanwhile, we talk about we are a software company. Uh, we have to digitally transform internally as well. So I've, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, my friends, I've seen uh, various companies uh, and my fellow entrepreneurs uh, who have built a tech startup, but uh, while they talk, uh, while they talk about digital transformation outside uh, as, as, as uh, for the clients, uh, they registered to become, uh, they registered to transform internally uh, as well. So, so that was one thing which I, which I saw uh, a change in me, I would say, uh, you know, we transformed our, uh, our, uh, our technology, our kind of, you know, the way we sold the, um, you know, the, the approach to the marketing, et cetera. And we, we transformed internally, uh, digitally. And then we, we started thinking, uh, that, okay, first digital inside and then digital outside. Uh, that was first thing we did. Uh, second, uh, with this pandemic, uh, uh, you know, it has taught us to become more progressive and progressive, not, uh, not, not, uh, not, not, not very slow progression, but you know, you have to do rapid progression and, uh, and we did it via instant integration. So, uh, if you see our software, it's a sales, uh, incentive automation software, and, uh, typically it has to connect with multiple data source to kind of, uh, prepare a dashboard for, uh, uh accommodating the rule engines. Uh, previously, we we were doing all uh, manual integrations with uh, with uh, with the systems. Now, uh, with pandemic, uh, companies uh, started asking for more services, and they started asking for integrating faster. So, what we did was we we built various instant integrations, and uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, APIs in different marketplaces, and we we hosted. So now. Any company who wants to uh, deploy our tool, they can go live within, say, you know, within within a day's time. Um, um, second piece uh, and other piece we did was uh, the CRM automation, where uh, you know we did uh, uh, we did uh, we did automation of the of the follow ups. We did automation of the feedback collection. We all, we automated about uh, mm -hmm. understanding the consumer or the client's voices. We we did a lot of automations uh, there too. So if you if you see as a whole, uh, you know, we as a software company, we uh, we transformed uh, ourselves internally um, um, to uh, to stay ahead in the market, uh, to stay in the market, I would say, and uh, uh, and yes, that's how that's how we have uh, uh, we are sustaining. Yes, the two uh, first two quarters of the pandemic were very very bad for us, uh, but uh, uh, our next two quarters has been extraordinarily good. Uh, so yeah, so so you we we have to go very very aggressive uh, in digital transformation internally as well as externally um, uh, to kind of stay uh, in the market and ahead of the market. Yeah, that 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 would that would be my take on. on Thank you so much, Kushal, for being so real. And you know, let me now do a rapid fire. We have five more minutes to go. Let me start with Sarv. We sing right now. Sarv, if you had to make three predictions for the future, uh, if predictions is a very large word, let's say, trends that you see becoming bigger, you know, who, uh, which we are not able to see in a big way right now, but over the next one to two years, they will become mainstream. Uh, same question to Kushal and Rajesh. Sir, we first you. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, I mean, it's hard to say, you know, what is uh, mainstream or not, but I think one of the uh, things that is that, that will break out, uh, I think, in India is the fact that as we go beyond the English speaking elite and, you know, the others start to use services and uh, uh, digital services and propositions, a very different kind of user interfaces, et cetera, will come up. 
uh, and voice is going to be one of the one of the big areas that i think is underdeveloped and and i think will 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 play a very big role uh, i think it's somewhat appreciated in certain areas and it's not appreciated in others but it will be a it will play a, a very big role and the second thing i think that will uh, that is going to uh, which is again i think at, at the crux of that uh, movement is the fact that as people have got used to doing things in a very digital and you know the fact that our payment systems are so efficient and so easy to use i think this is going to unlock a very you know very differentiated type of experience in this country so i think the distribution of products and services as it had has been done in other parts of the world may not be you know uh, may not exactly mirror the indian you know may not be mirrored in india and and i think that's that those i maybe i'll stop at two i think and let the others take a crack kushal yours yeah so uh, the first point would be the ability to collect feedback continuously and implementing it very fast so uh, you have to you have to keep doing keep collecting feedback and keep improving so that's that's the that's the only way to uh, to grow and uh, to uh, to make your product uh, uh, you know uh, um, where you want it to take Uh, you have to you have to take the feedback from the market, and you have to quickly uh, implement. And there are uh, enough and good number of uh, automations available for for feedback, uh, its analysis, and then how you can kind of improve it. That would be my first piece. Uh, second piece is uh, you have to go, uh, you have to you have to you have to start thinking digital internally as well as in, uh, externally, and uh, uh, you know uh, you have to you have to you have to think on. Uh, um think of the consumer customers how 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 they will see your product as uh, a simple product so simplicity is something which is uh, which is uh, very important and third is the collaborative collaborativeness uh, between the company so you can't do everything uh, in house uh, you have to uh, you have to partner with people so that you know you can go rapid you can go um, go fast and you can do a quality piece i think i think these are three pieces from my side Okay, uh, Kushal, I like the simplicity, but I like the fact that you got to reimagine your complete value chain digitally. And uh, while right now the physical and digital may coexist at some stage, digital will be bigger. Um, um, so clearly, and you you also talked about the ability to get quick feedback from all stakeholders and implement it. Uh, it syncs with what Rajesh said in terms of situational agility. They are kind of similar things. uh rajesh you have the final word yeah thanks uh, uh, yeah so I, i just taking off from what kushal said i think uh, one thing for me is the role that technology plays in our lives is going to significantly go up and i think it's about uh, how we choose to leverage that as organizations that will make a big difference between uh, you know the also rams versus the ones who succeed i think that's important also under i think the you know consumer perception of value is already undergoing a change and it will continue to undergo a change right see earlier Build on it explain that explain that yeah. so earlier it was about okay you get a certain value but now if you look around you what's happening is many industries have become really difficult to survive right small businesses have shut literally shut shop so you find a lot of economic turbulence going around all around us right and therefore the way i used to earlier perceive value for money i think is undergoing a significant shift so today as a consumer i'm really looking at it and saying is this spend actually required for me what role is this product or service playing in my uh, life which really makes it necessary for me to have that right can i postpone something for later which i don't need to invest in today so i think this whole value piece is getting redefined and the more we are able to understand that i think the greater the chance of organization succeeding so that's the other second piece that i see and the third piece which is been there a little bit with the youth of today which i think will only go up is the sense of purpose right i would like to associate myself with brands or people who have a sense of purpose which goes beyond just making profits or making money so i think the as an organization and as brands if we are able to align ourselves to a larger purpose which is either to do with doing good for the community doing good for the environment or whatever i think that again gives us a greater right to succeed uh, as uh, leaders and as corporates so i would say technology value redefinition and uh, having a sense of purpose thank you so much i learned something during the conversation i'd like to wrap up by saying what i believe in one is rightly as rajesh said the you know profit is important but the three more piece are equally important than the help in building the brand 
that is purpose, that is uh, people, and that is the planet. You talk to sustainability up front. I also believe uh, from what Kushal and Sarveer said that we are in a 3C economy. We are in a collaborative economy. We are in a compassionate economy. And we are in a contactless, which you may want to call digital or virtual economy. So clearly, uh, the three P's and the three C's become very important to be able to build brands and businesses. And in some businesses, there is you take away the brand uh, and the premium goes away. So there's nothing really left. It's, you know, we're in the business of building brands. And again, whether they're B2B brands like Kushal's business or B2C brands like uh, Rajesh is yours. And, you know, I know Sarvi, there's a B2B part and a B2B2C part and a B2C part. So clearly, uh, it's ever-changing landscape. We need to be, as leaders, we need to be keeping our feet to the ground, our ear to the ground, taking faster decisions, quicker, uh, taking more decisions on a weekly basis. And uh, if I may say, uh, agility uh, sometimes leads to, uh, uh, you know, resilience. I believe agility contributes to resilience. Uh, they are kind of intertwined. And I think in today's world, the most important two words are agility and resilience. Leaders that can show compassion along with these two attributes uh, will uh, triumph in the marketplace. So thank you, Rajesh, Kushal, and Sarvi for joining us in this conversation. Uh, in the evening, we have the Indian Marketing Awards. Uh, the who's who of the uh, brand and business ecosystem will uh, will gather to receive the award. The jury chair uh, will be there to make the jury chair address. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you at the awards and we wish you luck in your endeavor of building your businesses and the brands that power those businesses. Thank you so much. God bless you. Good evening. Back to you, Kyati. Thank, Thank you, Anurag. Thanks for having us.